good evening friends so in this video we will learn how to find the capacitance of a cylindrical capacitor a cylindrical capacitor is basically formed with the help of two cylindrical conductors of different radii but with same axis if we observe here i consider two cylindrical conductors of different radii this is the first cylindrical conductor this is the first cylindrical conductor and this is the second cylindrical conductor you have for both the cylindrical conductors the axis remains the same but the radii is different i am considering the first cylindrical conductor of radius a and this is enclosed by another cylindrical conductor of radius b in between the first cylindrical conductor and the second cylindrical conductor you have a dielectric medium in this way we can form a cylindrical capacitor so the radius of the inner cylindrical conductor is a and the radius of outer cylindrical conductor is b here in this diagram the second diagram i have shown the front portion of the top surface so this is the front portion of the top surface see here this is the inner cylindrical conductor and this is the outer cylindrical conductor in between the inner cylindrical conductor and outer cylindrical conductor we have two dielectric materials these two dielectric materials are of different permittivity means they are of different types so in between the radius a and the radius c i used a dielectric material of permittivity epsilon 1 and in between the radius c and radius b i have used a second dielectric material of permittivity epsilon 2 in this way in between the inner conductor which is positively charged and the outer conductor which is negatively charged i placed two dielectric materials hence this is called as a multiple dielectric capacitor multiple dielectric capacitor now we will see how to find the capacitance of this type of capacitor we all know that the capacitance can be given by the ratio of the charge stored on any one of the conductor either it may be positively charged conductor or a negatively charged conductor the charge stored on the cylindrical conductor to the ratio to the potential difference between the two conducting bodies means the inner cylindrical conductor and outer cylindrical conductor we need to know the potential difference and the charge stored on any one of the cylindrical conductor in that way we can find the capacitance now we will see how can we find the potential difference between the positive plate and negative plate we already know that the relation between the potential difference and electric field intensity is v not is equal to minus integral e dot dl in order to find the potential difference a positive value i need to move from negative charged conductor to positively charged conductor hence the initial limit is minus and the final limit is plus so in this way you can find the potential difference but if you observe the total potential between the inner conductor and the outer conductor is divided into two parts this is one potential which i am assuming as v1 and this is another potential which i can assume as v2 you can assume in any way so these are the two potentials if you find these two potentials you can find the total potential if you find the total potential difference and the charge you can find capacitance so in order to find this potential difference what we need to know we need to know electric field in between the positively charged plate and the negatively charged plate in between these two i need to know e so i can obtain electric field by using gauss law so if you apply gauss law so gauss law states that the total charge enclosed q enclosed is nothing but the total flux leaving the closed surface so i am considering a gaussian surface in between the inner cylinder and the outer cylinder and that gaussian surface is again a cylindrical conductor or uh, sorry cylindrical surface for that cylindrical surface if i apply gauss law i can get q enclosed as lambda into l 
where lambda is nothing but line charge density of this cylindrical conductor. If I know the line charge density of the cylindrical conductor, by multiplying that with the length of both the cylindrical conductors, I can get the charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface. And this is the d dot ds, where d can be written as epsilon e. From this, I can get lambda L is equal to epsilon into, whereas E, if you observe from the inner cylindrical conductor to outer cylindrical conductor, this is the inner cylindrical conductor and this is the outer cylindrical conductor, front view. So, the field lines are radially outwards from the inner cylindrical conductor to outer cylindrical conductor. This is the inner cylindrical conductor and this is the outer cylindrical conductor. From inner to outer, the, radial, uh, the field lines are in radial direction. Hence, I took E bar as E rho A rho bar and the DS bar is a surface element, the surface element in radial direction. Why I have taken only radial direction? Because for a closed cylindrical surface, for the top and bottom surfaces, you will get this integration value as 0. That is why I am considering only sides surface. In a cylindrical closure surface, we have basically three surfaces. Top surface, bottom surface and sides. For top and bottom, the in, this integration value becomes zero. Whereas for sides, you will get ds bar as rho d5 dz a rho bar. This is rho variation and this is z variation and this is the unit vector. If you take the dot product between these two, you will get this. These are the limits of pi and z pi is from 0 to 2 pi, you need to form a closed path and z is equal to 0 to L, you need to consider the entire length of the cylinder, hence you will get by using this analysis, you will get E bar as lambda by 2 pi epsilon rho A rho bar. Now you got electric field, from this electric field you can find V0. Actually V0 is, just now we have seen, it is the summation of two voltages V1 and V2. So, I can split this integration into two parts. One part of the integration takes care of the movement from here to here and from here to here and another part takes care of the movement from here to here. So, there are two movements, hence I am splitting this integration into two parts. See, if you observe, V0 can be written as minus integration of as uh, this is in radial direction. I can take the limits of rho, rho is equal to, first I need to move from B to C, then I need to move from C to A. So, rho is equal to B to C, what is E? Lambda by 2 pi epsilon rho d rho. Similarly, what is the other integration? It is minus rho is equal to, I have moved from B to C, now I, I need to move from C to A in order to reach the inner conductor. So, rho is equal to C to rho is equal to A and it is rho is equal to B to rho is equal to C. Now, what is the field? The field is same but the permittivity is different. As the permittivity is different, here I have written for as for the first movement, the permittivity is epsilon 2. So, I need to write it as epsilon 2. For the next movement, the permittivity is epsilon 1. Hence, I need to write it as epsilon 1. This is the only difference for the two regions, whereas the field remains the same. Now, by substituting this uh, electric field, you will get V0 as, for this integration, lambda by 2 pi epsilon is constant. You can take it out of the integration. 1 by rho d rho is ln of rho. If I want to, remove this negative sign, I can interchange the limits. So, ln of rho within the limits of, actually they are b to c. When I want to remove this negative sign, I, I need to I need to interchange the limits from rho is equal to c to rho is equal to b. Rho is equal to b. Next, for the second integration, it is lambda by 2 pi epsilon. Again, the integration value is ln of rho. I want to Remove this negative sign, hence I can interchange the limits. So, rho is equal to A to rho is equal to C. So, that finally, 
what you will get v naught as lam here lam uh, lambda by 2 pi epsilon 2 and here lambda by 2 pi epsilon 1 so it is uh, lambda by 2 pi is common for both the things here if you substitute the limits you will get ln of b by c ln of b by c by epsilon 2 plus ln of c by a by epsilon 1 this is the potential difference between the positive charge plate and the negatively charged plate which we can obtain from that uh, we can find the capacitance easily so if you observe v naught is this value now what is capacitance q by v naught so q is rho l into l or lambda what is the line charge density actually we have assumed it here as lambda l and here what is the potential difference it is lambda by 2 pi ln of b by c by epsilon 2 plus ln of c by a by epsilon 1 in this way you can obtain so lambda lambda gets cancelled you will get c as 2 pi l divided by ln of b by c by epsilon 2 plus ln of c by a by epsilon 1. In this way you can find the capacitance in between the positively charged cylindrical conductor and the negatively charged cylindrical conductor. Now we will see with a single dielectric. So, when we have only single dielectric, I can neglect this term and I can take the extreme limits are B and A. As we have two dielectric materials, I have taken first from B to C, then from C to A. Now, we need to take from B to A directly with the single dielectric material. Hence, I can neglect any one term here and I can take the limits. So, now C is converted to, here you will get 2 pi L divided by ln of now it becomes ln of b by a outer limit is b inner limit is a by epsilon farads so this is the capacitance of a cylindrical capacitor with single dielectric material first i have derived the capacitance with multiple dielectric materials this is the expression for multiple dielectric materials now I have derived the capacitance for single dielectric material. So it is C is equal to, you can send it to numerator. So you will get 2 pi epsilon L divided by ln of B by A. Where B is nothing but the radius of the outer conductor and A is nothing but the radius of inner conductor. So this is for multiple dielectric materials and this is for single dielectric material. So this is about uh, the capacitance of a cylindrical capacitor. Hope uh, you have understood how to obtain the capacitance of uh, different, you can find the capacitance of different configurations just by using the basic laws of electrostatics. So hope you have understood this. Thank you very much.